Life isn't perfect, and neither are we. Nope. But we know how to face our fears. And have some fun. And talk about all the messiest things of life. Like the messiest things. <laughs> get connected to yourself, get connected to others, and get connected to the life right in front of you. This is The Connected Life with Justin and Abby. That's me. That's you. And you. Hey, friends, before we kick off this week's episode, we got a little surprise for you. Yeah, we are doing a conference on boundaries for free. We want to Say invite you. what? I know. I know. We want to invite you to come learn about boundaries while we have none. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But we want you to be able to be a part of it. We have a school, the Life Insulting Masterclass. It's a three-year program. And every year we do conferences where there's a deep dive on different subjects. And this year we're inviting you to join the school for the conference on boundaries. Yeah, It'll be interactive. Out. It'll be fun. It'll be empowering. Yeah, it's going to be a really good time. And it's October 18th and the 19th, Friday and a Saturday. All you have to do is go to Justin and Abby. That's abi.com slash boundaries. And you can get all the extra details there. You can sign up for it. We'll uh, we'll send you a little something in your email and uh, check you, your spam. You have to respond. You have to get the email and yeah. respond to it to be able to come because yeah. last time it, it all, all the links got lost in spam. Yeah. Yeah. So go check out that spam folder if you don't find it right away after you hit send. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, hey, without further ado, here's the episode you're wanting to watch. You know what I love about us? I don't. <laughs> I love, last night we went on a little datey poo. Oh, a datey poo. Yes. We went on a date. We've been married for 16 years. And I had those feelings of like, I love that I get to talk to you for all of these hours in a row and hang out with you and picnic with like, I felt so happy to be with you. And I felt so happy that we had so much to talk about still. Did you feel surprised? Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. 16 wow. years later. We still are, we still have deep thoughts. We're still yeah. processing philosophy and worldviews and sharing about how we're growing and what's happening. And it just felt rich and deep and wide. Yeah. And I thought this is beautiful. Yeah. I don't know that that's the intro I'm looking for, but let me tell you this. Happy <laughs> 300th episode. <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty excited about that. 300 episodes. Yeah, that's a lot. 300 hours of our words. Really, that's like 400 hours of our words, because how many of these have we had to re-record at least once? Well, I'm saying for people listening. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's 300 hours, at least, probably. Mm -hmm. If not more, I... <sighs> Eventually, we can just download those all in 10 AI and people can have a personal Justin and Abby. Oh, <laughs> like a, a life guru that can Justin just tell and you Abby things consciousness. Like, get connected to yourself. <laughs> give yourself compassion. I am connected to myself. <laughs> <laughs> 300 episodes. I think about that and I was like, how did, how, how did we get here? I remember when we did our 100th episode. That was one of my favorites. We that did was live... only 200 episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> we did a live counting. episode, mm. and I still remember we raffled away a, a dinner with us to podcast listeners. That Yeah. and We got friends out of that. We got friends out of that, and we love them so much. Years later. Carly and Amos. Yep. We love you both. Yes, we we're do. We're glad we met you. They were one of my favorite parts of the 100th episode. Also, yeah. on our 100th episode live mm -hmm. thing is when we found our house. That, that, that is when we found our house. What is the surprise for our 300th episode? I hope it's three homes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's funny. Oh my gosh. I'm really excited about this. Like mm -hmm. when I thought about the 300th episode, I was like, I want to do something that feels special to me. Yeah. Um, And part of that is you're talking about, we've been married 16 years. Ooh. And I was like, I would really like to reflect on how we got together Mm -hmm. And kind of our journey up until now, because I'm like, mm, you know, there are some people that have followed us for all 300 episodes, but Which there's a lot of people. amazing. We love you. Yes. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> we'll keep you forever. <laughs> uh, but. Connected life for life. For life. But there's some of you, there's some that don't know. They didn't start at the beginning. They looked at the beginning. They're like, I can't start there because there's another couple hundred episodes I have to go through. <laughs> I actually very rarely scroll through to the beginning of a podcast. I don't either. And we're, I don't either. we might be less, I listened to a few from the beginning, 
And we were very jumping all over. Maybe I was just jumping all mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. and interrupting a lot. Well, we're going to give you all a fresh take on how we got together, uh, the life we currently live, some of the things that we do with our lives now, uh, the hurdles we've overcome. But mostly what you were saying before we started this podcast was you were saying about the hope That comes from looking back and seeing that there were so many fears that that we had, that we faced, that and there's been challenges and there's been triumph and the beauty of looking back and seeing how far we've come, the hope that comes from that. Yeah, I think that uh, there there there's a Chinese parable. I'm not going to go into it, but it's it's this idea and uh, Shia LaBeouf goes into it about this idea that you can't call it Mm -hmm. like and all these events can happen in life. They sometimes look like they're devastating. They sometimes look like they're the best thing ever, but it's really too soon and we can't call it. And there's a sense of like early on in marriage, I was busy calling it (laughs) (laughs) every situation. I was like, this is what this is about. This is disaster. This means it's horrible for or, us. Or this means everything's going to work out instead yep. of like being present with the moment in front of me. And when you look at back in retrospect, you're like, oh, there's a beautiful story that's being woven with our lives. And I think that that's hopeful for anyone to go, oh, someone who's been there for a little bit of time and looks back. Mm-hmm. It's all okay. I love that. So I know that we want to get going with like, do you want to start with how, where we met or how we or like, okay. When I met Justin, mm-hmm. I, the, the best way I know to describe it is from twilight. <laughs> ah, I imprinted on you. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that you know, that shows just how well you know me. Yeah. There's mm. this thing where the werewolves, they see somebody mm. and they're like, that's my person forever. And I didn't believe in that kind of a thing. And, and so I wouldn't say it was quite like that, but it mm. felt like, but the way they felt like I was it, a werewolf. No, <laughs> no, no. It felt like the whole world tilted towards you and i couldn't think like it felt like a tunnel vision to you and i couldn't think straight Mm -hmm. now i was not really used to that like that had i was not a boy it was my sexual prowess (laughs) (laughs) i really didn't know what to do with that feeling because it felt like just so consuming almost like yeah i was just like where is he who is he i need to talk to him i need to be around him if he was in the same room as me i I felt like i couldn't even think straight we were at a conference together and if i saw him across the stadium if i knew where he was sitting and could see him and just like i couldn't i couldn't pay attention i got you frazzled he got me frazzled yeah but i was in this season of like i'm gonna move to africa and i'm gonna work in an orphanage and I'm not getting married. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I thought. Mother Teresa over here. Yes. So I was like, I'm not going to go down the path towards you. Which was interesting. Like I did when, when we first encountered each other, there was a sense of. You were friends with my best friend. Yeah. And we had never met before this conference. And we, we meet there at this conference and there was this electric banter yeah. between the two of us. And uh-huh. I was like, oh, she's witty. She's fun. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of light in your eyes. Oh, like, I loved the life that I could see within you. And I was like, thank you. I want to just fall into those eyes and make out with that mouth. <laughs> <laughs> fall into those eyes and make out with that mouth. You know, no. and then we were, <clears throat> we were walking at the conference from with having our great banter. Yeah. And my ex-boyfriend was driving pulls up and rolls down the window yeah it was driving through the street we were walking through stopped in the middle of the road to talk you and him had a very masculine energy off we did yes and then it was very interesting it was it was territorial and i wasn't even that i I wasn't even like it wasn't like you and i weren't even dating no nothing was really happening but i don't know but you're like no no, back no, off. Back up, yeah. I feel your testosterone. Get it out of here. <laughs> but he called me later and told me that he knew I was going to marry you. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. What were you doing talking to him, you hussy? <laughs> 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 That's um, funny. Yeah, but uh, that, it was interesting. Like that time we were able to have that exchange and then we went our separate ways. Yeah. I, am, I was focused on my mission. 
mm-hmm. my calling that I mm-hmm. actually never did. Yeah. <laughs> and you went and dated a, a hussy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sure she's wonderful. Yeah. But you had a lot of strong emotions and about that apparently behind the scenes. Okay. Well, let it be known that you did pursue me after the conference. I want it to be known. Did I? Yes. I tried talking to you a little bit. On MySpace. Yeah, but you didn't talk yeah. back to yeah. much. Yeah, so I was just saying it yeah. wasn't like I tilted towards you and then you just dated another girl and it broke my heart. It was like I tilted towards you. You pursued me. I was like, I can't in this season. So I didn't respond. And then you started dating another yeah. girl. And I thought that's yeah. normal. But I thought yeah. every time I saw a picture of you and her, I thought, well, I want to throw up. They are so wrong for each other. They're not meant to be. They are not meant to be together. No. I had like a violent reaction and yeah. I would share with my best friend. I didn't think I was supposed to be with you. I wasn't even oh. thinking about it. You're like, but that's just gross. I just know that you guys I can't imagine the two of them making love. No, I, <laughs> I was like, you would say like cutesy boyfriend, girlfriendy things on MySpace. <laughs> that's so old we are. And I'd be like, oh, gag me. Gross. Don't call her babe. Like that is, you guys are clearly not made for each other each other mm-hmm. but she looks like a very nice person yeah mm-hmm. yeah she's a wonderful funny person yeah yeah i'll pass it along the next time i talk to her <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh but fast forward we ended up in la and uh, i ended up i was living in fully alabama for a, a short stint about seven months uh outside of my la time I ended up back in la and that's where we ended up really reconnecting yes and uh there was do you remember me walking up to your house. I remember you walking downstairs. Oh. Because I was in the backyard. Yeah, but you came out to meet me at the car. But then there was another time when you came down the stairs. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> no. Wearing the dress? And I was on the was, first I was time by the I pool. came to your house, I was wearing the dress. <laughs> I remember the story different. <laughs> Who knows? Make up your version. What's your version? No, you can tell me yours. Your ver- well, my version. Is and this might have been a different time, but I was sitting down by the pool mm-hmm. and you came walking out, mm-hmm. coming down the stairs in the backyard, and I was like, Oh, hello. Mm. And I it really caught my attention. Why? The dress. <laughs> <laughs> the dress gets all the credit. Does it? Yeah. Aww. You look you look so foxy and you're so vibrant and full of life. No. But we definitely we had a we had a a a, a time where I was on a break with the girlfriend mm-hmm. that you weren't on board with. Uh-huh. And at, during that break I was on with her, my sister was out in LA Yep, and I was spending time with my sister for a full week. I, I'd taken off work. It so happens you came out to visit your best friend for a week. And I was we there just, for a wedding actually. Yeah. Our yep. worlds collided and we got yep. to hang out for the whole week and there was nothing, there wasn't any. No, I was one of the reasons I, was interested in you as you had such good boundaries yeah. while you were dating her. Like, uh, or I hung taking out, a break. <laughs> yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. But I hung out with you and your sister and then the guys that you lived with and stuff. My friend had to work that I was there with. And so, um, and you had really clear, I could feel your boundaries. You followed through on your boundaries. Like you weren't trying to like no. get away with getting connection from me while you were dating someone no. else. And that felt really safe. And I felt really like it felt honorable and safe and trustworthy. That's the kind of guy that you want that you could trust to be around another person and know that they're not going to do something. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we had that and and it was a really great time. And then. And we just had instant chemistry. We talked for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. I was like, it felt like I had met, you know, my best friend. Yeah. I thought I remember thinking when we met I'm, and I'm jumping ahead to like once you'd broken up with her. Yeah. Um, but because you broke up with her pretty soon after. Fourth of July. <laughs> I remember <laughs> you're very happy about that. It was day of freedom. Freedom. That's what you yelled. <laughs> uh-huh. What I did find is that over the coming months that I was very clear, like, this is a, be- this is a, this is a best friend. We we're having best friend conversations. Oh yeah. And then you ended up finding yourself back in LA and we ended up on this whole journey of fake dating for a whole season. Yeah. It was best friends that we were on that edge of well, dating. I just say like, we had too much chemistry. Yeah. And I don't know. Couldn't if, contain it. I don't know if the chemistry is 
like I think there's multiple levels. There's something about our personalities that I think mm-hmm. I've never met somebody who has as much faith as you, uh, um, dreams like you, has as much work ethic as you do, like all of that stuff. You just were, you were my match. It was the first time that I felt challenged because someone was running as fast as me and as hard as me at life. And I thought, wow, that's incredible. So part of our chemistry was that I think we were like made for each other. And then part of our chemistry, I think, is that we had trauma that was attracted to each other. And so all of my childhood issues and all of your childhood issues were like magnets that were like, zoom, like I have to be with you, not realizing you are all of the childhood pain that I'm running from I, and vice versa. Yeah, I don't think the word you're looking for is zoom. I think you're looking for the word boom. <laughs> <laughs> there is something there's there's the draw of both the electricness of personalities mm-hmm. and that happens to a lot of people and yeah. then there's the draw of like here is the chemistry that is based out of all of our messiness mm-hmm. and it feels like it's home because it is all of our home our <laughs> childhood messiness yeah it feels and i remember saying that i feel like you're uh my best friend that i just hadn't met yet mm-hmm. a lot of people say it feels like you're home to me and they don't realize that's because there's something about them that is familiar to the home you grew up in and there i thought you were the opposite of my family when i married you i yeah, thought me you too. were completely different than where I came from. And I thought I was the one percentage of person who found a way to not marry their childhood issues. Yeah, me too. And then we were very (laughs) surprised. What happened? Yes. Yeah. Uh, All that to say, um, it ended up being a situation where we found ourselves very quickly, like falling for each other. Yeah. And a whole season of having to break up um, from the dating experience we weren't having, <laughs> it was like, we're not dating, but we kind of are dating we and we need to break this up. Yeah. That's what we were a in. Situationship. Yep. That's what they're called now. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Mm, situationship. situationship. Mm-hmm. But anyways, we ended up finding our we way. We broke up from the situationship and then we got together in a real relationship. Yeah. And then we got married. Yeah. And it was wonderful and horrible all at once. And all that to say, as we get into the married thing, if you want to hear the story, it's, it's really intricate and fun and wild and kind of like a movie, but it took four episodes to get through and we are not. Yeah. You can check our first four episodes if you want something like that. But all that to say, we found ourselves thrown together in our first year of marriage and you had a wild idea and you were like, I really want to travel the world. The U.S. Or the U.S. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just take time off. Let's just be wild and take a couple months off or something. Yeah, let's take out some months off and let's just go where we feel like we're supposed to go and stay for as long as we feel like and we're supposed to stay. that was terrifying and crazy to me. <laughs> you were crazy. You were a Looney Tune. Do you, do you remember the meltdown I had over oh, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what did you feel? I still feel it in my body. <laughs> what did you think and feel? I was like, what is she saying? I've never not worked uh, or been Since in you were like... 13. Yeah, yeah. I was either in school or or I was working, but I was never doing nothing. Right. And that felt so irresponsible. Now, keep in mind, this was 2008. We didn't realize what 2008 (laughs) even was. The downturn of the economy. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, I don't know. Let's just quit my job. We're going to go do this thing. We both quit our jobs. But we were, we were, the beauty, the beauty of it is, is that we were innocent. Like we Mm. weren't listening to the ramblings of the world that were going the on fear. we were paying no attention to it we were too young and too stupid <laughs> and we were just connected to ourselves and we were just like all right let's do this but when you initially said let's let's take this leap i was having a meltdown internally i'm like okay but what are we going to do for money for three months and i had saved up a chunk of money and at that time it was a reasonable amount of money and so i was like all right well we do have some savings to live on and I'll get back and work as fast as possible, like, uh-huh. you know, get back to work. Yep. Well, that's not what happened. We no. went on a trip and it ended up taking us six months. Six months of driving around the United States. You thought States. maybe three weeks and it took six months. Yes. Starting with heading north all, all the way through Oregon to Washington, around Montana, mm-hmm. and looped ourselves all the way East back Coast, through mm-hmm, all the way East back. Coast, mm-hmm. Vegas, and back to L.A. And like looking back, I'm like, how did we spend six months? months on the road oh it feels easy to me because I, <laughs> <laughs> we had so many fun experiences we did. in so many places we pretty much asked our friends who do you know where 
Mm -hmm. who, who has family where? Who do you know? Where do you know somebody? And so we stayed with people and most of them I had never met. Some of them you had known before. Mm -hmm. And then some of them were friends of friends or parents of friends we stayed with. Like it was a, a wild journey, but it, it was so beautiful because we learned so much in each place that we went yeah. to. But the biggest thing is we were forced to be with each other. Yeah. And we were forced to and face I, each other. I wouldn't recommend this to any married couple. <laughs> <laughs> this is utter insanity. But mm -hmm. uh, it was a it was an invitation that was actually, I think, on the table for us for uh, learning how to face each other and face levels of ourselves. Mm -hmm. you know, it was the beginning process. I remember feeling this internal thought that said, um, in one year, I'm going to do like... 10 years worth of work in your heart, what would take normally 10 years. Mm -hmm. Felt like that voice of God, that internal voice. Yeah. And I was like, what does that even mean? And so these six months are like this crazy intensive of like every issue on the face of the planet coming up inside of both of us. Oh, yeah. you And this is really where you began to face so much fear. Yeah. Fear was the like the giant that I was out to have to slay. You know, when you first get married, you're I think marriage is scary. I know for me, I didn't want to get married. I was terrified of what I had seen happen in my childhood, in my family home. I was like, that looks miserable. That looks trapping. It was hell for both of my parents. I don't want to do that. So there was a terror of choosing into marriage. And then as soon as you get married, there's such, there can be, not everybody experiences this, but if you have a part of your heart that loves adventure and new, the idea of making a decision that is forever can feel really trapping and like, oh my gosh, is this the person I'm going to be with forever? And I think sometimes the reason first years are so high stakes for people inside of marriage oh, yeah. is because all of a sudden they feel that way. This is forever. Will they always will they always talk on the phone like this in the middle of dinner? Will they always brush their teeth this loud? Will they always like whatever it is? Like, what is I this get gonna into? be forever? Yeah. And the one thing I tell people is there are very few, like, there's a lot of things that have changed since year one. There like most things change as life grows. Yeah. I think that if you're will if you're submitted and wanting to engage life, it's there's so much that is just required of us to change. Mm -hmm. It's it's an invitation on the table that's kind of demanding. <laughs> change. <laughs> yeah. And mm -hmm. and because of that, uh, so many of the fears, I wish I could go back to year one and be like, I know you're terrified that Justin's gonna end up being an addict. He's not. I know you're terrified that Justin's going to go off the deep end and have affairs. He's not. I know you're terrified that you're never going to feel safe and and valued. You will. Like there, there's just so many. I, I know you're terrified that he'll never note, give you attention. He will. As a side note, like when you're being like an addict and affairs, I'm like, sounds like there was something I was up to that would provoke that idea. No, I'm just saying that those were the fears I had yeah. about marriage. Yeah. So there's no way for you to like when we get married or get into a relationship that's serious, if we have a lot of fear about what something could become, our brains go into confirmation bias. And so they are gathering every moment of evidence that could prove my needs are not going to get met. So let's say that when you are growing up, you watch that your dad never takes care of your mom's emotions. She, he never meets her needs. So then you have a belief, oh, men don't care about my needs. Then you get married or in a committed relationship, your brain will start looking for every moment of evidence that your partner isn't going to meet your needs, that they're not going to care about your emotions. And we do this subconsciously. So we're always gathering evidence of our fear. Our body gathers evidence of fear to try to protect us from threat, but it often just throws us into threat. Mm -hmm. And so my brain, when I married you, was having threats go off all the time. Oh, no, he's going to be like this. Oh, no, I'll never get my needs met. I'll never feel seen. I'll never feel loved. I'll never feel desired. And so all of those fears, whenever you would do something, then I would build a case. See, he didn't do this and he didn't do this and he didn't do this. And this proves he's going to be the man that hurts me instead of uh, being able to notice like this is my fear filter. 
And there's probably going to be things he does do to hurt me because he's a human. But I also have no idea what it's going to look like. And we have power to learn and grow together. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that it was such a year of facing so many fears. Like you said, all of your confirmation bias is hitting. Mm -hmm. I'm sure all of my confirmation bias was hitting as well. I was sitting there the whole year convinced that I'm never going to do anything with my life. Oh, yeah. You took one year where you weren't working in the same way as you had, and you thought, I'll never work again. Well, let me add this. We spent six months on the road. We got back into L.A., and we spent another six months just living in L.A. Mm -hmm. And in that entire uh, season, we had one job that we worked together. Mm -hmm. We had a, a when we were in L.A., someone mm -hmm. hired us to do some some work on a, on a film set on or set, a commercial yeah. set. And... I was like, I don't even know. Like I started calling around to get work when I got back and stuff. And it was 2008 mm -hmm. and the, the back end of that and no one was hiring in mm -hmm. LA. And so now I'm like, I started realizing like, oh, I have somebody that is relying on me at some level. This isn't just Justin just gets to go couch surf. This is like a partnership and someone who is looking at me to, uh, stand up and be powerful. And I'm like, I don't know what to do and I don't know how to take it. And I went into that deep place of feeling like I am so inadequate. I'm never going to amount to anything. And I was facing that lie that I'd never been out of control enough to have that lie so come to the surface. Oh, yeah. You were terrified. I found you crying in fetal position multiple times. <laughs> I year. did. Sob crying. Because you were so scared. And it, I, there was such a fear that we would never be okay. And, the, and it was so high stakes that, that we would like break our whole lives and we'd be homeless for the rest of our life. That was very real to you. Yeah. Does, does that feel true? Yeah, very much so. I felt like I could do permanent damage because of what I've done by walking away and now there's no restarting. And what I was realizing was how much powerlessness I had, like powerlessness mm -hmm. was surfacing really big time mm -hmm. that I was a victim of my circumstances and couldn't do anything about it. But what's really cool is along the way, as we were saying yes to following this, this, this thing inside of us that said, go on this journey, mm -hmm. we kept getting these, these interruptions of information where it was either an interaction with someone that gave us a piece of wisdom or it was a book that we were given mm -hmm. to read or a teaching series to mm -hmm. listen to. And it was- Well, we dove into transformation in that Yeah, era. absolutely. That was a foundation of us being like, no, you can change the condition of your heart and mm -hmm. the condition of your mind if you're willing to just say yes to facing the things you're experiencing. And it's wild because now we can look back. So that year you felt like we're not doing anything. We're wasting our time. And I'd be like, we are emotionally so productive. We are like learning so much about ourselves and healing and going through like feeling our pain from our past and, and getting rid of it and learning how to bond and communicate. And I'm thinking like, this is so productive. And you redefine product, productive productivity for me. Uh -huh. You'd redefine that through being like, hey, Justin, I know that you want to be productive. Maybe productive is being connected right here and now to yes. this moment. Now, I will say it was very easy for me to say that because I have a, a very high work ethic. I am typically a workaholic. Mm. So it's not it wasn't coming from a place of like, we should never have to work. We should never have to earn things like I am like work hard. But I'm also like follow your intuition. And sometimes the hard work is internal as well. And so the crazy thing is that first year. The growth and the transformation process we went on, you ended up walking me through all kinds of healing. Yeah. And I ended up walking you through all kinds of healing. We gained this skill that ended up being the basis of us creating a life consulting business. And then we ended up helping. And now we literally take people on year journeys to transform their whole lives the same way that we actually, and they, they can work while they do theirs, but, but now we literally take people on year long journeys to transform their lives so that they can come alive and get rid of the baggage that has been holding them back. And, and so everything we did, we had no idea that it was going, that it was actually the foundation for the house we would build. Yeah. And, you know, 16 years ago, 
was around the time I also was making this commitment inside of myself to face my greatest fears, no matter what it cost me. Mm -hmm. And I knew that somehow if I could face these fears head on, that I was going to actually become the man that I was made to be. Mm. And when I look back, I'm like, oh, year one, 16 years ago was about the universal liberation of humanity. Like this for all humanity, like the liberation process is to be willing to face our greatest fears. Mm -hmm. Like once you can begin to eliminate fear out of your life, you evolve into who you're supposed to be. Like you return Finding your to the, authentic self. Yeah. You return to the truth of who you are from a place of love, mm -hmm. of what love designed you to be, the truth of your being. Well, you're not talking about just facing your fears. You're talking about allowing love to come in where fears once had space. Not only where fear had space, but where fear had defined the reality mm -hmm. of my life. So my belief system, I noticed in that year, all of a sudden was looking at myself being like, oh, I believe so many crazy things about myself mm -hmm. and about my future. Mm -hmm. I don't believe I'm lovable. I don't believe things are going to work out. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that good opportunities can come my direction. Mm -hmm. I don't believe there's any way for me to get. And I started seeing like fear has created a deeply limiting belief system inside of me. And it is keeping me bound and inside of a cage. Yeah. Keeping you small. I think we're, fear is another way to talk about limiting beliefs and we often don't grow farther than our beliefs will let us grow. And so I'm sitting here thinking, I remember our first year and I was like, I had such crazy money beliefs. I was like, well, I'll never make money. I, I, I remember feeling like my only hope is if you make money and I had no idea I would end up being coming great at business and having all kinds of opportunities for me to do business. Like I never would have dreamed that, but I remember the first year we were married, spending time, literally writing out all my money beliefs. And one of them was, uh, because my family had literally told me like it, my family had told me, what if your husband dies, then you won't have any money. Like, and I was like, this is a crazy thing to tell me. But so I was like, I'm not powerful enough to make money on my own. Mm. I'll never be successful. I'll never be whatever. I had all these beliefs and I wrote them all out. And then I wrote the opposite of those beliefs. And then I would spend time and I would write letters from the future to me. Then I'd be like 2021, which was really far in the future back then. <laughs> and I'd be like, I'm so happy and thankful now that I feel powerful and like I have something to offer people. I'm so happy and thankful now that I, I value my own work. I feel like I have something to contribute. Mm. I, I believe in myself. I know that if I lose a job, I can go find another job because I have skills that, that are helpful, like things like that. I remember writing, I'm so happy and thankful now that I'm buying groceries and I don't feel a pit in my stomach about how much money they're going to cost. I'm so happy and thankful now that I feel like money is going to keep coming in and I don't have to be afraid of it, of it stopping. Like I just started working on my beliefs and feeling like, what would I feel like if I believed that I was going to be okay? What would it feel like if I believed finances were going to be okay? What would it feel like if I believed that I could could do more than what the lies had told me. Yeah. And that beginning to challenge my fear, beginning to challenge my beliefs, beginning to challenge the limiting lies around me opened me up to walk into taking more and more territory in my life till I did feel powerful, till I did feel like a badass in business, till I did feel like I had a lot to contribute. Yeah. It's so good. Well, I even think about my own side of stuff where during that time I had to keep confronting the lie of inadequacy, mm -hmm. right? Because <clears throat> that lie of inadequacy was just creating so much limitation yes. inside of it. And I remember deciding like, I'm either going to allow my history to determine who I am or people to determine who I am, or mm -hmm. I'm going to decide to determine who I am and whether or not I'm more than enough mm -hmm. and whether or not I'm capable of participating in life and doing victorious things. And those were things that like those early days, I could feel like this. It's almost like 
something's being ripped out of your being. Oh, it's so <clears throat> beautiful. Right? Right? It feels like every part of you is being ripped into a million pieces as and I thought initially I was like, oh, this circumstance is causing my me pain. And I started to realize, no, these circumstances are revealing the truth that already exists inside of me that was lying dormant, weighing me down. And now they're just surfacing and I'm feeling them in real time, the effects of them on my psyche and on my well-being. And then I and as I address them, I had to pass through them one after another after another. And I remember telling myself, this is not unto nothing. Mm -hmm. There is a purpose that this is unto. This is going to unfold into something greater for me. And I remember, especially the first three or four months on the road, like I'd go on walks by myself and ha have panic yeah. meltdowns. But I would just tell myself, Justin, you have to believe this is mm -hmm. under something greater. The truth is, is that this is not a waste of time. This is going to benefit you. This is going to launch you into the your future. All of this right now, you just have to trust. And I kept telling myself, you just have to trust. Mm -hmm. And I watched that like in my darkest moments. I was like, nah, but I know what I've been through. And I know that it has to produce something greater. Go ahead. Were you going to say something? Well, I was going to say, and what was cool is that there was a natural, it wasn't like I came up with this great idea mm -hmm. and now I'm going to purposely change my life. It mm -hmm. was, I kept saying yes to the moment that was in front of me. And there was a, an evolution that ha there was happenstances, right? Like all of a sudden we had a close friend of ours that in spending time with us. Wait, before you get into that, I, I want to say there was happenstances you were evolving You're right day by day but we can never see growth in day by day increments so like that is the only way change happens it happens because every day you change a little tiny bit a little tiny bit a little tiny bit you don't notice the changes because it feels so minuscule until all of a sudden you look back and you see you've gone a, a far distance like you don't notice the inch you've grown every year until you look back and you're like, wow, I'm like five feet taller. And so that's something that I think is so important is in our first year, there wasn't a way to measure yeah. the personal development <clears throat> growth that we were having. There wasn't a way to see, are we growing? Are we becoming successful? Is our whole life changing? And one thing that I think happens is on the personal growth journey, there's a dormant season, like a winter where you can't see the evidence yet of the of the transformation that you're doing. We have a we have a school that we've run and I watch this like people can't see that they're changing, they can't see that they're changing, they can't see. And then there's like a a moment, a turning point where all of a sudden they're like, "Oh my gosh, I just thought this revolutionary thought that I never would have thought before. I just believed this whole new thing about me. I just had compassion for myself naturally and I've never done that before." Where the the fruit of the work starts to spring up, but oftentimes people because they can't see immediate results, they give up on the yeah. growth process before they get to the, the turning point where they get to see the fruit of their labor. And for both of us, if there's one thing I could go back and tell the younger version of me, it would be don't despise the wrestle. Yeah. Like that, because so much of our lives, circumstances were happening that were bringing up our greatest fears, our triggers, our insecurities, our limiting mindsets. And instead of thinking, oh, this is so painful. Now I would look back and I'd be like, hey, the wrestle is actually how you grow. That's the feeling of expanding. That's the feeling of growth. The wrestle is how you create more space inside of you to take up more room. And so you and I went on this process of being, of growing, of personal growth, digging in, walking each other through stuff. And there became a very authentic transformation that we went through. And because of that, people around us would, it would almost feel sucked into the transformation happening within us. It was almost like a, a felt experience that people would start to like they'd be around us and they would start to fa want to face their fears and they would feel the courage and the hope and they'd feel the love. They'd see the love that was radically transforming us. And they would be like, I want to invite more of that love into my life too. It was contagious. The healing we were going on 
was contagious because we were doing the work in us. Yeah. So in, the cool thing is, is that the, in the contagiousness of it all, there was someone that found impact in those conversations mm -hmm. and found herself uh, taking a trip home to Texas only to have people be like her mentors. Yeah. You have changed so much. What is it about you? What have you been doing? And she attributed a lot of her transformation to her time with us. And they got curious about like, what were, was she, how much was she paying us as coaches and stuff like that? And she was like, they're just friends. And they're like, you have to pay them for like, this. This is something yes. worth paying for. Investing we're in. watching your life and you're the best <clears throat> version of you. You've been, you need to, you need to sew into this. Yeah. So one of the things that was so cool about that is that she returns back and says, Hey guys, I need to pay you guys for this. And we're like, you don't need to pay us. And yeah. there becomes an argument back and forth. Totally. And she was like, I will be paying you. Here it is. And so we were not sudden, trying to start a business. No, all of a sudden we're submitting and saying yes to Okay, I guess to the we're opportunity do this. that opened up right mm -hmm. in front of us. And that's something that I have learned through my process is being willing to be present in the moment and allowing whatever is opening up to me, allowing myself to say yes to it and be like, all right, I'm an active participant. What is going to happen inside of this? And that to me is like living on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's in those gifts, but when they get put in my lap to open up, I'm going to open it and I'm just going to say yes to experiencing it. And I think very, very, like I did not, now looking back and can be like her one decision mm -hmm. to do that changed the entire trajectory of our life. Yes, one single response. But in that moment, it didn't feel like a big deal at all. It just felt like no. this is so random. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it was just like, I'll take the next step. Like yeah. I didn't think at and, all. And I think most of us are looking for those life changing moments. Oh, this relationship's going to change my life forever. Oh, this decision's going to change my life forever. Instead of looking for, I'm just going to follow the breadcrumbs of whatever next thing falls into, into my path that feels right. That feels aligned with what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> as we were saying yes inside of that, I watched her invite other people into the situation where she would begin to say like, hey, well, my what friends, happened is they, I'm sorry. You really want to I'm tell these sorry. stories, don't you? I'm so sorry. Just uh -huh. this part. Uh -huh. And the previous part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. What do you want to say? You want to go? Well, she was, get, people started asking her, what is changing in your life? And she was getting so much breakthroughs that she's like, oh my gosh, I'm meeting with Justin and Abby. And that is what I tell my number one business advice for people is if you do something great, word of mouth will spread. Yeah. So the thing that I want to say about this. I'm sorry. Is that there was a continual yes. Like all of a sudden she's pushing for us to meet with some of her friends. And that felt like a risk, but I'm going to take it and see what happens. And early on, I remember being like, oh, I know that this is part of my future as well. I don't know how it plays out, but I know it's part of it. So I'm going to embrace this season. And all along the way, going all the way back to, yes, I will quit work like, I didn't really know. Like, I was like, I believe this is part of my story, but I didn't see the enormity of how big such a simple decision was to quit work and go travel around for six months, <laughs> three weeks, uh, I thought at the time, right? And now all of a sudden, I'm at this moment of like, all of that cultivated into me just spending time with these few people. And then as you watch this evolve, fast forward, like what, 12 years from that point? Was it 11, 12 no, years later? Little, here we are now. No, no, it was, a, it was more than that. Because that was in our, that was, it was 14 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we fast forward and here we are. We're sitting, running an emotional health podcast. We have uh, a school, our, li our life consulting masterclass. We have all kinds of teaching programs. Yeah. We've trained right? hundreds of consultants to do what we do. Correct. And I'm like, we haven't even e reached the pinnacle of possibilities. Mm -hmm. But what we keep doing is at each phase, all the way from back there, is we keep saying yes to the thing that's right in front of us. I remember thinking, I used to have another podcast. And when I started that podcast, I was like, I don't know if anyone will ever listen to this. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. 
I feel a burning inside of me mm -hmm. to have these conversations at this time inside of my life. And I bought a little bit of equipment and was like, let's start having these conversations. And I started doing those conversations on my own with a friend of mine. And that started evolving into something. And eventually when that quick, here we are with the connected life that jumped out of it, right? But if I wouldn't have said yes to the thing that I was like, this isn't, I'm not doing this hoping that I'm gonna gain fame, mm -hmm. opportunities. I'm doing it because it's a passion inside of my heart. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that people are really scared to do is to do things that have passion in it. Like, oh, it's my passion, but I, it may not work out for me. I, I wrote a book called The Tree of Life. And I was like, if no one ever reads it, I'm doing it for me. I'm going to do this podcast. And if I only do it for me, that's all that matters is I'm doing it for me, but I'm going to do it fully. And you were talking about this earlier. You started touching on it, which is this idea of if you do anything with excellence, you put your full heart into mm -hmm. it. You can't help but have something be produced out of it. The byproduct is that people are magnetized. They're magnetized towards excellence. Mm -hmm. They're magnetized towards the experience of that passion mm -hmm. that's inside of it. And I just watched so much evolve for us because of just saying yes to the moment that was in front of us. And when I look back, fear could have been the thing that kept us from all of this. Oh, I'm too scared to leave work. And none of this would be here whatsoever right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm too scared to go ahead and get paid for this consulting gig that I'm doing right here with this person. Because I've never done it before and I don't even it. know what it is. Yeah, I have no idea. I feel like a fraud. Mm -hmm. But I said yes over and over again to facing these fears. And mm -hmm. it evolved. I could have said, no, I'm not going to get on and do that podcast. What if people listen to it and they make fun of me right. or it's irrelevant, or, you know, and I didn't care. I wasn't listening towards fear, at f to fear. I was just going like, I'm going to do what's in front of me. And I think that that is one of the most valuable things that ever happened for the both of us is that we're just doing what's inside of our heart. Yeah. And it keeps producing fruit. Yeah. I mean, that's always, we've always just chosen to follow our authentic path more than what we think makes logical sense. And I have, I have this feeling, and this is from my history with religion and faith, I believe that if I follow my authentic path and I do my own personal work, that I will eventually get to where everybody else got, maybe just through a different pathway. Yeah. And so um, us spending time to do our own inner healing and our own work, I thought that will get us somewhere. I don't know where, but everything has purpose for me. That's how I've lived my life. And when I, because that belief has been something that I've followed. I've seen it play out where I don't go the, the typical pathway, but I end up getting to the same place as everyone else. And for me, you know, it's a beautiful story. We started meeting with her and then her friends and then word of mouth just kept spreading over and over and over again until people were coming in. And then eventually our waiting list grew and we both, uh, we both were overwhelmed by in a good way. That's one. It's a wonderful problem to have is to have too many people who want to meet with us. And so then I started training people because I was like, I want, you know, we were hearing things like I got in a couple sessions with you, what I've never gotten in years of counseling before, or I've never felt this free or I've never encountered love like that. And those stories we knew were true. We were seeing tangibly people's, we were seeing people's lives tangibly transform before us. And I was like, there, I can't do this though. I can't, I can't see enough people. So then we started training people. Then we, because there were so many people, we ended up doing online courses because we were just like, how do we make it available for more and more people? So we did online courses. Eventually there was so many people in those courses that they wanted to do a school so we did a school and that's kind of what has led us here. And I had no idea when I married you and had so much pain come up. Both of us had so much pain, so much fear come up from our triggers, from our past, from our experiences, from us not knowing how to do relationship well and us having to learn to wrestle together has been the the key ingredients. And it wasn't like, Oh, one year of transformation is what built our business. It was one year of transformation launched us into having skills and tools in the area of breakthrough. I'd say like actually like an anointing to see breakthrough in people's lives, but it is the constant 
healing process that we've both been on that has kept those wells like almost like the water is clean still. There's still there's still water that we have to give away because we have continued the growth process through our journey. Yep. Harrison Ford, <clears throat> when asked about his career, was reflecting on all of his friends that he came out to Hollywood with. And, you know, he was like, they were like, what's the difference between you and them? Like, why did you make it and why didn't they make it? And he was like, oh, because I didn't quit. Like my friends decided to go, like they spent enough time, they got burnt out and they were like, all right, I'm done. I don't want to do this. But he was like, but I kept saying yes to the thing that was right in front of me. And all of a sudden he's on the set at, you know, he's building sets on the set of Star Wars. And he ends up like, I think it was George Lucas was like, you know, I want you to test for this part. Mm -hmm. I think that's how, it ha I mean, I could be telling the story wrong. I could be fact checked on this, <laughs> but I remember it being like, Oh, but he just kept grinding. Like there was not, he was not willing to give up. And I think that it's a powerful story because we saw so much beauty evolve out of it. And a lot of times we aren't willing to keep saying yes to the things that, that is in front of us. We get met with things that feel like failures or feel like this is too much for mm -hmm. us. And we tap out and your yes is going to yield results. Mm -hmm. Like I know that looking back in my life, my yes, in the hardest seasons when it felt like everything was as dark, the darkest things were happening, that my yes was going to carried me into where I am now. And it's going to keep carrying me into more stuff because I'll just keep saying yes to the moment, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think like you just never know. I think there's very special moments happening in our life all the time. When I look back and I see the pivotal moments in our lives none of them felt special when they were happening. They just felt like do 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 we're just going along and oh this thing happened and I'm going to I'm going to choose in. I'm going to choose into the adventure of life. I'm going to choose into learning and growing. And and really seeing I wish I could go back if I again if I could go back I'd say everything's for learning, girl. If you can just like whatever challenge you have Whatever obstacle, like if you just see it as a chance to learn a little bit more, not as high stakes, is this the right path for your life or not? Is this the wrong path to take? Like if you could just see everything as an opportunity to learn more and follow your heart and intuition between learning from failures and triumphs and following what you feel is the authentic path for you, you will find beautiful things happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So really what I want, I hope in, in this 300th episode of just kind of doing a little reflection of an overall look at our lives is that I hope that people are able to look back or look at their life that they're at currently right now and let go of the judgment they have about the season that they're in. Mm -hmm. It was very easy for me back in the day to, to judge the moment that I was in, but you mm -hmm. can't call it. Like yeah. I was saying earlier, you can't call it. You don't know what it's going to be. Yeah, you don't know if that season is the season that will set you up for the rest of your life. Absolutely. And when it's happening, you don't know that it's happening mm -hmm. oftentimes. So it felt like it was a normal mundane thing of like, hey, we quit work. We were just connecting with each other for an entire year. But that was a pivotal time of our entire lives that redefined everything. And we didn't know it was, we weren't quite sure that it was happening as we were happening. We had hope. I hope this is onto something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as I was breaking down crying, please tell me this is onto something. And there were so many moments along the way that were like that, right? And so to me, as people are looking, let go of judging your season that you're in. Mm. Know that it's not as high stakes. I thought so much of it was high stakes from quitting the job to I mean, every Even choice. We've made a ton of life choices Tons of them. that didn't make sense Even in that Even when we season. left LA to come to Redding, California, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, why am I going to Redding? I hope it's only a year. But because, Nothing good could happen there. Yeah. But the truth is, is that because I came to Redding, California, there was a community of people that were passionate about transformation mm -hmm. inside of their heart. Mm -hmm. And as I am building this business organically, I have a flood of people who are consistently coming into my office. Mm -hmm. You know, I met with over 4,000 clients mm -hmm. face to face Just crazy. during my one-on-one -on -one season. Yeah. And I would have, I don't know that I would have ever gotten that type of FaceTime with people 
uh, that early, that quick mm -hmm. anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But it was because we both said yes to it. But I feel like we're supposed to be in Reading. Mm -hmm. I'm going to trust that. And I don't know what it's unto. Mm -hmm. But then it was a, a major foundation to all the other things that have unfolded as well. Mm -hmm. But so to me, it's like, Trust your intuition. Get connected to yourself. Can Trust your gut as you feel a yes. Don't judge it as you take these little tiny steps. And if some of you are out there listening and you're like, I need to go on a deep transformation process, we have so many things that we are uh, that are coming up. Mm -hmm. Get on our mailing list. January 2025, we are starting a whole new thing that we've never had before. And a new program. I'm just scared to say it too much in case anything changes, but I think it's going to be 75 Heart. This is just a teaser. You Who know, made a, up that name? You did. It's after and some of you are like, what does that mean? There's a program called 75, 75 Hard, Hard, and it's like getting your life in order. The 75 Hard, you like work out twice a day and drink a gallon of water and like read 10 pages from a book. It's like very like things that structured. Um, and people do 75 days of something hard to see a huge transformation. And we're going to do 75 heart. heart. So 75 days starting January 1st till whenever 75 days is from that, <laughs> to actually get connected to your, to your heart, get connected to yourself, get connected to your authentic being so that you can know and be in tune with that voice of intuition that can help lead you along the way. Yeah. Excited. So get on our website, get on our mailing list so that we can tell you about that as it's ready. We have all kinds of other goodies coming out for you. Yeah. Um, but this is um, and hit subscribe because all of the podcasts hit will be subscribe. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe and click the bell button. Bell. So you can be notified. So if you want to check out things and get on that mailing list, you can go to Justin and Abby. That's ABI dot com. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can get on there. And uh, I'm glad that we said yes 16 years ago. It's been a wild ride. It's not really that we said yes 16 years ago. It's that we have 16 years of saying yes. Yeah. I'm like, That's a good I way think to put it. I'm really glad I picked somebody who would keep saying yes with me. Yeah. Who would keep saying yes to marriage when it was hard. But who would keep saying yes to facing fears when they were scary. Who would keep saying yes to trying new things, even though it stretched us. You know, who would keep saying yes to growth. That is the most powerful thing. And I wish everyone, if there was one thing I would suggest for looking for a romantic partner, it's find somebody who is willing to grow the rest of their lives. Yeah. Find somebody who is digging into growth, who wants to learn, who's a lifelong learner, because you will never be trapped with a lifelong learner because they will always be growing and becoming. And that is why I'm thankful I chose you. Yeah, you too. All right, guys, you're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. <laughs> Bye now. And um, for those of you who aren't watching YouTube, he has a mug in his hand and it says, you're killing me, Smalls, with a picture on it <laughs> from his favorite movie. Bye now.